Outgoing President Donald Trump says that he'll not be attending the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden on January the 20th. His refusal to attend comes just hours after he had tweeted a video committing to a peaceful transition of power following the violence on Capitol Hill on Wednesday. Amid calls for his impeachment, senior Democrats in the U.S. Congress say that they could start impeachment proceedings against Trump as early as next week if his cabinet does not remove him using the 25th Amendment of the Constitution. Meanwhile, Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, Nancy Pelosi has urged U.S. military officials to discuss precautions to prevent him from starting a war. As current president, Trump still holds the authority to order the use of the country's nuclear weapons. In a letter to fellow lawmakers, Pelosi said that Trump could not be more dangerous and everything must be done to protect the nation. Meanwhile, the UN Rights Office said that President Donald Trump should disavow very dangerous language that he and other political leaders have used about the US election results and the storming of the Capitol in Washington this week. UN Human Rights Office spokeswoman uh, Ravina Shamdasani also expressed concern about the display of symbols of white supremacy outside the capital, such as the Confederate flag and anti-Semitic symbols and a noose. We are deeply troubled uh, by the incitement to violence and hatred by political leaders. And we are calling on the President of the United States and other political leaders um, to, to, to stop, um, to um, disavow, openly disavow the false and the dangerous narratives that are being spread, including by casting aspersions on the um, electoral process in the US, including you know, uh, spreading disinformation um, about allegations of electoral for fraud and vote rigging. Um, this kind of insightful language um, can be very dangerous, as we have seen um, in the events of Wednesday um, at the U.S. state capitol. We are concerned um, that some of the protesters uh, were clearly displaying symbols of racial and ethnic hatred and white supremacy, um, including uh, the Confederate flag, um, clothes displaying anti-Semitic logos, um, and a noose um, erected from, from across the uh, capitol. Um, we condemn this display of overtly racist symbols. Um. John Le Boutillier is a former member of the House of Representatives, and he joins us now via Skype from Long Island, New York State. Uh, John, thanks very much indeed for joining us, and uh, welcome to the program. Peter, it's been all of two days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Since we last talked. So, and I have to say... <laughs> This thing here, it's unbelievable what happened two days ago. I think it's just sort of coming into focus. And in many ways, it's worse than it seemed when it was happening that day. Yeah, I was uh, speaking to our colleague, our correspondent in New York yesterday. And I began by saying that it's, it's only in the aftermath that one gets a, an understanding of just how serious uh, what happened on Capitol Hill was particularly in a world where terrorism uh, has uh, been uh, an order in the day for so long that uh, the states, uh, uh, the Capitol Hill could be in, uh, 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 penetrated in the way that it, it was. I mean, it was amazing. It's like there was an, almost no security there at all. Uh, they could have killed multiple members of Congress or taken them hostage because that one guy had you know, zip ties that are used for handcuffs. They had guns, they had bombs, they had Molotov cocktails. Um, they did kill a, mm. a police officer. There is a first degree murder investigation underway. The people are systematically being rounded up and arrested. Uh, and it was incited by the president of the United States. So I think he is going to be punished for this, obviously politically, but ultimately legally. He incited an insurrection and a riot that resulted in people dying. 
and he is going to be impeached again by the House of Representatives next week, no question. He will be sent over to the Senate. There will only be a few days left in his presidency. I don't know what they'll do. They'll probably run the clock out, but they'll look terrible in doing it. When what ought to happen is Donald Trump should be fired out of his job right now. All right. Well, let's look at those options then, the political ones. The first one, uh, which perhaps looks more likely. Let's start with Mike Pence, though, um, and his cabinet and the, the cabinet sec uh, secretaries. Do you think that Mike Pence has the appetite to follow through with the request by Nancy Pelosi that the cabinet should do their job for the nation? Well, that's called the 25th Amendment. It was enacted 53 years ago. And it's to remove a president who's incapable for a health reason or whatever of doing the job. Donald Trump, by all accounts of people who are around him, is mentally unhinged. But in order to use the 25th Amendment, uh, they'd have to get a uh, majority of the cabinet to agree to that, sign it with the vice president, and that would remove Trump. Uh, there's Apparently, Trump, uh, Pence won't talk to anybody about it. Uh, the Democratic leaders of Congress have tried to talk to him, and he won't even return their phone calls. So it doesn't sound like the 25th Amendment is in the works. And several cabinet officers yesterday quit. And so they wouldn't be there to vote against Trump anyway. All right. So 25th Amendment, unlikely. But this impeachment in, the, uh, in Congress... That then, will they speed it up? I mean, is that going to be literally do away with the normal formalities and just have a quick vote? Because that's what will, will be required. Yes. Uh, they, I just saw the deputy whip of the House on television 10 minutes ago, said we're going to ram it through. We're not going to have Judiciary Committee hearings or any of that. Take it right to the floor early next week for a debate. Sounds to me, Peter, like by about Wednesday, that's one week left in the presidency, uh, they will pass articles of impeachment in the House, send them right down the hall to the Senate. That leaves a week. What the Senate will do, who knows? It's, it's still run by the Republicans mm -hmm. at that time. Mitch McConnell will have to decide what to do. There are some senators some Republican senators who would vote to remove Trump. I have no doubt. There need to be 18 of them, plus the 49 Democrats, uh, to make 67. Mm. I, I, and they probably are running out of time. What's the status of the two uh, Georgia senators uh, that lost their uh, Senate seats the new two new ones are Democrats. Is it too late for them? When do they get sworn in? Well, it's a great question. They don't get sworn in until the Secretary of State of Georgia, who's now a famous man because of the phone call last weekend that Trump made to him, Brad Raffensperger, he has to certify those elections. Uh, Purdue who lost to Ossoff, uh, he, is, he is a senator, but his term ended last Sunday. So he's not a current senator. So he would not be able to vote in a Senate vote on Trump. Uh, but I'm not sure his replacement has been certified yet, so that seat's not mm. occupied. The other one, uh, Ossoff, no, excuse me, uh, Raphael Warnock, they might certify that by then, and he would be a senator by then. But it might, could happen. But it might still not be enough uh, to uh, get uh, the impeachment done in time. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's happening around Donald Trump at the moment. Um, we're seeing cabinet members resigning, members of staff resigning, um, senior Republicans uh, speaking out uh, quite loudly 
uh, at, the, at the moment uh, uh, against the president. Uh, what is likely to happen? What kind of scenario can you see? Is he just going to ride it out and uh, we'll see what happens post uh, uh, the fact? Or what might happen in the next uh, 13 or so days? Well, one of the big things that might happen, and it was reported again yesterday by the New York Times, is that Trump is considering pardoning himself which has never been done in our history. Uh, but he may do it, figuring eh, by the time it gets up to the Supreme Court, whoever would challenge it, it'd be a couple of years. And no serious constitutional scholar believes that pardon would be upheld. It would make every president, a man and someday a woman, above the law. And it would mean that a president could be in office, murder people, steal money, take bribes, break the law left and right, can't be prosecuted while he's president, we know that. And then on his last minute out the door, he pardons himself, boom, gets away with every crime. That's not the American mm -hmm. way. And it's not going to be upheld. But it could take years. But I look for Trump to pardon his family himself, uh, God, and it's stuff that we just can't imagine he's going to do it. Is it possible for an impeachment process to happen after uh, somebody leaves office? Because the consequences, I guess, would be that he couldn't hold office again in the future. Well, there are two votes that get taken. If the Senate were to vote to remove Trump, as I said, it requires two-thirds of the 100 Senate. Assuming they're all there, that would be 67 votes. If they were voted to remove him, they then can take a second vote on banning him from ever holding any public office again. And that is, I believe, just a majority vote, not the two-thirds threshold. Uh, I do not know, so I'm not going to mm. lie, if this could continue after he's left office. I, I don't know that they continue the trial and vote to remove him. He's already removed by the fact that his term has run out. So I really don't know. All right. It's very interesting uh, at times indeed. Uh, so yesterday, he, we see him on Twitter. They allowed him back, uh, gave him one more chance. And uh, he delivered this, what looked almost like a presidential statement, um, calling people to be calm, uh, saying that those that uh, cross the line at Capitol Hill will have to pay a price. Uh, and then today, he says he's not going to the inauguration. How are people making sense of these two different uh, moments? Well, I think they're making sense by realizing he's cuckoo. This guy's not right. Uh, everybody who's around him is saying it. He's in a dark place. He's unhinged. He's not doing well. That is why Nancy Pelosi just announced an hour ago that she has talked to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to make certain if Trump issues some order that's, that's going to get us into a war, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs won't carry it out. Mm. And he apparently assured her that there are safeguards in place. All right, he we, we're dealing with something we, we've never really dealt with, a crazy president. Now, we had a little bit of that in the summer of 1974 with Richard Nixon near the end, where he was drinking heavily and acting erratically. And his chief of staff and the secretary of defense then did the same thing mm -hmm. to the military. So don't follow any orders without going through us. So how significant is it that since 1869 that a, an outgoing president does not attend the inauguration of his successor, which Donald Trump says that he will be that guy? Well, it's 
it's it's predictable with him. Uh, it's too bad, really, because for the sake of the country, <clears throat> it's the inauguration is always the way where one party hands power to the winning party, and we all shake hands and say, "Okay, we're Americans first, Republicans and Democrats second. Trump is all about Trump, so he's not going to do that. I have to say, Peter, and we, I talked to you two mm -hmm. days ago, and it's already coming more becoming more clear that the era of Trump ended Wednesday. The reputation of Trump went down the toilet on Wednesday. It will never recover. Even for the 70 odd million people that voted for him. Well, I would say some of them will revere Trump, but not all of them. And I think most of them will admit we need to move on and they'll look for another leader, different leaders. But the notion of Trump coming back in four years, not going to happen. All right. John Le Boutillier, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Peter. Talk to you soon again, I'm sure. <laughs> Definitely. That's uh, John Le Boutillier speaking to us uh, from uh, Long Island, uh, New York State. Uh, he himself, a former uh, a congressman and uh, a Republican as well, uh, dealing with uh, Donald Trump, who he says emphatically is unhinged. More of the globe after this.